A lot of times, instrument students will ask me what power and configurations they should use on an instrument approach. I really try to avoid teaching to fly by the numbers, so to speak, because there are so many factors at play in this. Aircraft performance is affected by winds, air pressure, temperature, altitude, and weight. But we could still figure out a generally acceptable power setting for your instrument approaches. We'll use the Cessna 172 here. Most precision approaches like the ILS use a 3 degree glide slope. This translates into a certain foot per nautical mile descent. Translating feet per nautical mile into feet per minute requires us to know our ground speed. For our instrument approach in the 172, we're going to shoot for 80 knots airspeed, which is 80 knots ground speed and no wind. Some people like to go faster or slower on their approach, but we'll use 80 for the 172. A rule of thumb for figuring out your required feet per minute to make a 3 degree glide slope is to multiply your ground speed, here it's 80 knots, by 5. That would give us 400 feet per minute. So that's what we're going to shoot for. Up at altitude, we can experiment with different power settings that will give us 80 knots and a 400 foot per minute descent. We're going to also want to fly our approach at 10 degrees of flaps from the final approach fix inbound. This gives us an advantage in the descent without being configured too much, making us too slow and mushy on final. Let's see how 1700 RPM works out for us. We're going to start by closing the throttle a bit, referencing the tachometer on the top of the MFD screen here. We'll be applying back elevator pressure to keep the nose up in order to bleed off some speed. We'll introduce 10 degrees of flaps and allow the nose to settle into a descent, just below the horizon reference on the PFD. We've pegged our 400 feet per minute, but at this power setting, we're a bit fast. We targeted 80 knots. Let's carefully bring the throttle back to fix that. At just above 1600 RPM, we seem to have found our target speed and descent rate. So we'll use 1650 as our approach setting. Realistically, anything from 1600 to 1700 will work fine too. Remember, this is Microsoft Flight Simulator, not an actual Cessna 172, so figure out what your aircraft will actually do. So let's test this out on an actual ILS glide path. You can see the green diamond of the glide slope coming down, and as it's just about to hit center, we're going to set up for our approach again. Throttle back, targeting 1650 RPM, holding the nose up to bleed speed, and introducing flaps. The rest of your pre-landing checklist could happen here as well. We'll pitch down just as we did before. In a fixed pitch propeller plane like this, our RPM will change with speed and pitch changes, even at the same throttle setting, because the air will cause the propeller to spin faster or slower. So we'll need to make fine adjustments after our pitch is set to get back to our target RPM. After we stabilize, we see that we're nearly at our 80 knots and 400 feet per minute descent and the glide slope time is centered. Now let's throw a twist into our approach and give ourselves a headwind of about 20 knots. This slows our ground speed, meaning we now need a shallower descent rate to keep the glide slope. We still want our 80 knot airspeed approach though. After we stabilize for the wind shear, we see that we're dipping below the glide slope. We need to arrest our descent, and to do that, we'll need more power. After we re-establish on the glide slope, we return to a descent. Now we're targeting a shallower descent rate, so we keep some extra power in. Here it seems like a full 1700 does the trick, so not much change from the zero wind settings. Not enough to make it useless to memorize the RPM numbers. Do still use those as a guideline, but just be aware that you'll need to adjust given different winds. Of course, wind isn't the only thing that affects our numbers. We're in balmy Puerto Rico on this approach. Let's try one in frigid North Dakota. The temperature is low, the pressure is high, so the density altitude is super low, and our performance will be much better than it was in the tropics. Here, a power setting of about 1500 RPM is good enough to give us the 400 feet per minute to hold a 3 degree glide slope. So again, not huge differences, so figure out your own airplane's power settings for a good approach and apply them. But be aware that you'll need to make adjustments for different flying conditions. Check out IFR Ground School today at the link here or in the description.